Hey, hey, it's Leanne and Simon on Loving Life Now for today's topic, does this really mean that? That's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, <laughs> Uh, a funny one, isn't it? It's a bit of a funny one. Does that really mean Does that? Does it really? I don't know. But I'm going to do some sharing where you can... Well, it might, uh, just, be, it might just be things that you say. Does it really mean that? No. Like that's a male woman thing, isn't it? Like men go, does that really mean do that? Do you really mean that? And then you say that about men. Does that really mean that? I don't know. Anyway, that's our topic. So okay. does that really mean that? So welcome everyone. Uh, pop your details in. Let us know you are here. Hello, Rochelle Brooks. G'day, welcome, said hi guys. Um, Kayla, over there in Boston, welcome Kayla. Good, Good to see you. Good morning. Ida. Hi Ida. Who else we got out there? Pop your details in the chat. Let us know you're here. Sharon Scott, good evening from Kivington. Hi guys, looking great. Thanks, Karen. Uh, who else we got? Okay, Kelly on the Sunshine Coast. Good evening, Kelly. Welcome to the stream. We've got Terry, greetings from Cairns. Uh, Francis, hi guys, I'm completely intrigued by the topic. Awesome. Uh, Piggy says, hi Simon and Leanne, nice to see you both all the way over there in WA. Uh, Annette, hello from Melbourne. Dean Smith is watching. Where are you from, Dean? Pop your details in, let us know. Um, hi guys from Cairns, g'day, welcome. Uh, Rob Collins, hello Rob. Who else we got? Hi from Kalgoorlie, Sharon Jones, welcome. Shani, hello from Sydney. Bernie from Burley, welcome. Um, I'm trying to share so pop your details. Not pop your details in. Let us know where you are streaming in from, so we can welcome you. Hello, Kerry in Mackay. Uh, we've got Kevin Collins. Hello, g'day, Kevin. Where are you streaming in from? Wayne, good evening. Simon and Lee, how are how are both of you? We are great. I'm good, except for my computer's not. <laughs> Shane is from sunny Melbourne. Good on you, Shane. Well, it's overcast and cloudy on the Gold Coast with rain and showers today and 23 degrees. So there you go. Um, what else we got? Lee, you, you sharing? You're not no, sharing? No, I'm trying to get there. Okay, all right. So keep talking. All right, well, we've got a great topic. It says, does this really mean that? And I was just joking around at the start saying, well, That'd be a, a um, male-female thing, wouldn't it? One says one thing, the other says, does that really mean that? So we have a different perspective on things, but we've got a great topic around this. So good morning from Sandy, I think it said Oregon, was it? Let me just go back here. Sandy Oregon. from Sandy, Oregon. Welcome, Salvador. Uh, who else we got? Michelle says hello from the Gold Coast down the road. Uh, Kevin is from WA, welcome. Good evening, Leanne and Simon. Good to see you both and great to be here live uh, from Merrimack on the Gold Coast. G'day, Hi. Nick. Uh, Miles, g'day. I'm here currently pretending to be a red wine connoisseur. I love it. Pretending to be. <laughs> pretending to be. I could pretend to be with you, Miles, <laughs> quite happily. <laughs> um, Ken, g'day, Ken. Ken the Lane in Newcastle. Welcome, guys. Great to have you on the stream this evening. Done. Uh, Karen and Steve are from Aratulla in Queensland. Aratula, I think. Depends what side of the fence you come from. Uh, Gabby's clapping and saying hello. Uh, Zane, hi everyone. Who what else we got there? Dean Smith. Um, Debbie's in Varsity Lakes. We got another one in Varsity neighbor. Lakes. G'day, Debbie. Welcome to the stream. Uh, Karen Collins. Karen. Oh, Karen. A lady, lol. <laughs> Thanks, Karen. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> uh, Kerry Young, I'm pretending to Miles as well. All right, so Kerry's on the red wine as well. Good to see. You. All right, well, that's All great. Right, Have you got those shares uh, going yet? It's just taking forever, but I'm done now, I think. All it's right. Uh, Kelly Hamilton says, joining a little late. Hopefully, I haven't missed too much. No, no you, you haven't. missed anything because I'm still sharing. You've missed nothing, Kelly. Nothing. It's all good. All good. Now we're stopped. We're done. And we were a little bit late. Hi, Leanne and Simon. Tanya from where? Moolumbar, was yeah. it? Yep. Uh, Lorraine. New Zealand. From, maybe? well, uh, possibly. Uh, Tang <laughs> Tangrata. Um, Kiora Tangrata. Kiora, I'm thinking she's in New Zealand. Oh, she's a Kiwi using that language. Uh, Kelly says thanks. All right, so does that does this really mean that? Nah. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a crypto topic, isn't it? Crypto. <laughs> it's a bit of a crypto topic, I think. Like Bitcoin. Or does no <laughs> no just strange. Right. Like it's got a double meaning. Does right. this really mean that? Mm -hmm. Hello from Germany. Carolina, is it Carolina? Yeah. Hello, Carolina. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Sue Robson just Another gold jumped Sue from the Goldie. What was that? Just 
Just jumped on, Sue yeah. from the Goldie, all right. Mm -hmm. uh, Julie, hello, Julie, welcome. Hi, finally able to log on, good on you, excellent. All right, so let's talk about our topic, does this really mean that? And for those of you that jumped on a little bit late, I was saying, Lee, it could be a little bit like a male-female thing, right? A woman says one thing, a man interprets another. A male says one thing, and a woman can interpret another. It so could we be have a child that, and an adult. It could, but we have a yin-yang thing, yeah, yeah. right, between men and women. So what we say could be interpreted what you differently. Mean are two yeah. different things. So you know, does this really mean that? So what you just said, does this really mean that? But that's actually not what the topic's about. No, it's not what it's about. We're so I know someone everyone. was. At, no, someone was intrigued about the topic. Mm -hmm. So we as human beings in life, we assign meanings to our experiences from the past. I'm just going to move this. You're going to move something? A little, right. little tiny bit. So we assign, our, uh, uh, we assign meanings to the experiences that we have uh, in the past. And mm -hmm. they can be events, they can be uh, information that we've encountered over our past in our lives. Mm -hmm. right? So we, we create a, a meaning around it. Yeah. So think about the topic. Does this really mean that? So we're going to talk about the, me, the, the experiences that we have in life and how we create those, but we also attach meanings to them. Yeah. Now, are those meanings serving us in our life? So we use filters in our life to learn to create a meaning. And it translates uh, via our thoughts, Mm -hmm. what we believe to be true, uh, the decisions that we make, and the actions that we take, and we create our life experiences, mm -hmm. right? So we filter things in our life based on our belief systems, our thinking, um, the decisions and the actions that we take. So Gabby said, so funny, Jason and I were having a conversation about men and women interpreting things in different ways earlier today. <laughs> <laughs> well, it happens all the time, and it's not intentional, it's just... We speak different languages, right? It's mm -hmm. like the, the love languages, there's five of those. Um, and uh, of course, then we have lang different languages. Between well, I think, I think men and women interpret the importance of new dresses very differently. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> do you a, agree? That's a whole different language. <laughs> do you agree? <laughs> hang agree. on, hang on. Where do we go on the weekend? Besides being in Brisbane, um. and we're, we're officially in quarantine. <laughs> We're not in quarantine. No, we're, we're in. We've got to be we're isolation. We've got to be in lockdown because we're in Brisbane. But yeah. where do we go in Brisbane? What? Sassenbite. Sassenbite. So it was all worth it. It was all worth it. <laughs> Lisa says, "I want to go to Sassenbite. I said, "I don't trust you going there on your own." <laughs> but I went with her. And then he brought me something. <laughs> Two things. Stuff. <laughs> See, so, so that's what so you got to do. It was lucky that you came. <laughs> no. That's what you got to do. You got to. You got to go to. Me. You got to go to um, your favorite clothing store, mm -hmm. take your significant other with you and uh, get them to help you try stuff on. <laughs> get him to pick stuff and then he has to buy the stuff he picked. <laughs> Which is what I did. So anyway, I said, this will look really good on you. And she loved it. She goes, ah, oh, okay. So is, is that a gift now? <laughs> is that a gift? <laughs> All right. So we talk about... <laughs> Seeing the TikTok about the dresses. Yeah, about the dresses, yeah. That so, was a whole other dress situation. That was. So, so we talk about, does this really mean that? So when we're in Sass and Bide, Lee goes, ah, oh, so does that mean you're paying? And I'm like, does that really mean that? Yeah, it does. <laughs> um, I guess I'm ponying up, I said to the girl. <laughs> I guess it's on me. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's, a, how you do it. it's a beautiful white dress and you'll get to wear it this weekend for Easter. And Anyway, yes. so lovely. So when we are dissatisfied in our life, we look for the cause of our frustration or the cause of distress Mm -hmm. So things that are causing us to stress or, or frustrating us, or we're not getting the results that we want. So we've got unsatisfactory results. So we, we look for these things when we're dissatisfied in life. Mm -hmm. But it's not always the cause. Sometimes it's the meaning that we give to things in our life. And I'm going to share this experience. So we've got to change the way that we, the meaning that we apply to things in order to change the results, mm -hmm. okay? So here's a story for you that you don't know. So when I was six years of age, my mum and dad, I lived in Brisbane, and my mum and dad worked at the Brisbane Exhibition Showgrounds, the Echo. Yeah. And they were on a, um, with my dad and my uncle's business, and, and they worked there, you know, full on for the show. And I was being babysat by the next door neighbour. Mm -hmm. And I was six, 
Yeah, I think I was, I think I was six. And I was being, being, sat by the, being babysat by the next door neighbor. They were looking after us. She was a great lady and uh, we referred to her as Auntie, right? Auntie Marge was her name, Marge. Very typical Aussie, 1970s name. So anyway, Marge um, had us over there, my sister and I, and was looking after us. And her son was about to leave the house. So he went down the back stairs of the house, the big Queenslander, and jumped into his car, which was a panel van. Panel van, you mm -hmm. know. And, uh, and the dog was downstairs, and it was a Labrador. So I went down and patted the dog, and the dog was chained up. And before he drove away, I patted the dog and then turned around to walk away. Well, the dog actually attacked me. So the dog jumped on my head and put its teeth at the bottom of my neck and its mouth at the top of my head. And there was a concrete pole beside me and the dog grabbed me like a rag doll and banged my head against the pole and knocked me out and continued to maul me. So I actually ended up in hospital and I had 59 stitches through the back of my head and I was in hospital for six weeks, I believe, to be the story. Um, of course, my parents were devastated. Uh, they couldn't believe that I'd been attacked by a dog on the back of my head. And, um, and of course, Auntie Marge felt terrible um, because the dog was chained up and wasn't a ferocious dog of any means, but something triggered the dog. I didn't do anything to the dog. I didn't pull its tail. There was people standing there, you know, so Maybe I just went down. Maybe it was the noise of the car. Just or... went down to pat the dog anyway. So the dog attacked me and um, ended up in the Children's Hospital, the Royal Brisbane Hospital. My parents were across the road in the exhibition. They had to race me to hospital with towels, you know, to stem the blood flow and et cetera. So whilst I was in hospital, um, my parents came across and were, of course, were horrified, mm. devastated, etc. And I spent time in hospital healing and I remember I had this friend that I made in hospital and he was actually in a full body plaster. Oh, gosh. I don't know what happened to him, but I remember they would pick him up off the bed and put him on a trolley and he would scoot around the ward with his, on, like on his, with his hands because oh, yeah. his legs were in plaster, right? Mm. He, everything, his whole body was crazy. I don't know what happened to him. Um, anyway, um, so what happened was that I attach a meaning to that story. Mm -hmm. And that meaning is that all dogs are ferocious and I don't trust dogs. And that was the meaning that I attached to that story, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, which so is fair I, enough. So as I go through life, um, we then had, we had a dog. We had a German Shepherd and uh, his name was Ben and I loved him and he was a great dog and trusted him. But I then developed this this amazing fear of dogs. Mm -hmm. And to the point that I wouldn't go anywhere near a dog. So if we went to somebody's house, there's no way that I would get out of a car while the dog was loose mm -hmm. uh, in the property. Yeah. And in those days, dogs were less restrained. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah. Like dogs, you know, walk down the street. Well, I got bitten by a cat when I was a... A cat? Yeah. All right, well, it's not... All right. Don't, it wasn't don't... the same. But I just, I, the same. <laughs> I'm just saying I got bitten by a cat, right. the neighbour's cat, <laughs> when I went to feed it when they were away. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. <laughs> so... All right, so when I, when I then grew up and I, you know, I walked to school, um, I, would, I would walk down the middle of the road in the street because I was edging my bets as to if a dog came out from a property on the side, I could yell or run or do something, put my bag in front of the dog or whatever. But I would not walk down the footpath. I would walk in the middle of the road down the street. These are in the back streets, right? Um, and if a car came, I'd get off the road. Or walk in the gutter. I would never, ever walk on a footpath. And then if I walked with somebody else, they had to be closest to the mm. fence where the dog may have been, you know, if you walk mm -hmm. down, in those days you walk down and the dogs would run up and down a fence beside you and they'd be barking and, mm -hmm. you know, dogs had more freedom back yeah. then. So they, you know, walked down the street and dogs would come out mm -hmm. and bark at you and the owner would come out and growl at the dog and pull it back inside. So my fear of dogs developed and just, just, just exacerbated throughout my life. And um, I created this meaning to it. So I would avoid dogs. I uh, created um, my own level of anxiety around dogs. So I you know, was very anxious around when I'd go into somebody's property or somebody's home and I would ha the dog would have to be literally tied up. 
mm. tied up or outside where it couldn't get in. And heaven help it if it got in, right? Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I'd be up on a bench. Um, so I created this belief in my head around the fear that, that had been created by me being attacked by this dog. So I had this one situation which traumatized me. Um, so I created a negative, it became a negative outcome. Mm-hmm. But the outcome was not never going to get better whilst I allowed that negativity and that meaning to be attached to it. Mm-hmm. Right? So it limited my recovery because I believed that every dog was vicious or was going to yeah. attack me. So I was scared. I was fearful. I was anxious. And the only way I could overcome that was to confront it. Mm-hmm. Right? And, and stop telling myself that story. Right? So does this really mean that? So does this really mean that all dogs are ferocious? Yeah. Does it? Are all dogs no. ferocious? No, no, they're not. Not all dogs, right? Um, so as I grew up and uh, I reached my late teens, early 20s, I got a dog. I got a German Shepherd. And I went and got him, took him to dog training and trained him. And, uh, and then I had to move away and the dog couldn't come with me. I moved from Townsville down to Sydney for work. So I, uh, he was a pedigree German Shepherd. So I actually gave him to a place that trained police dogs because I wanted him to, ha- you know, to have that best training and that best experience. So I set myself up to overcome the meaning of dogs. But still, I didn't trust other people's dogs. No. So I trust my own that, that I was in control or I was the master or I was the, you know, the, the, um, the one in control. But when it came to somebody else's mm. dog, I was totally, totally off this planet, right? So what I was doing was I was avoiding pain and I was avoiding danger. So I was avoiding putting myself in those situations. I didn't want to experience bad experiences. I didn't want to create, you know, it was creating me a whole lot of pain and discomfort mm. throughout that. Yep. So, but the good news is, right? The good news out of all this is what? You can control the meaning that you've attached to that experience. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And you can control the meaning that you attach to any experience. So any traumatic experience that we have in life, we can attach a different meaning to it. Mm -hmm. So I had to overcome the fear of dogs by not believing that I was fearful. Mm -hmm. I had because you know what? Dogs, what do they do? Do they sense fear? Yeah. Of course they do. Yeah. They sense uncertainty. They sense a level of fear. So they run up to you and sniff you. Mm. And I would be like dead still. Freaking out. Like freaking out. Deadpan, right? Someone get this dog away from me, right? Could be a little chihuahua. Who knows? <laughs> They're the worst ones. <laughs> it didn't have to be a big dog. It could be yeah. any dog. So, so for me, I had to overcome this. And then... Uh, and then later in, later in life, I had another dog some years ago, Benji, who I loved. And, you know, he was my mate. And, um, you know, my, my fear of dogs becomes less and less as I um, allow it to, as I become more experienced or try and attach a different story to it. So the, the end result here is, well, not the end result, but the thing is we can... We can change our meanings of experiences that we have um, because these can be bad relationships. Yeah. So let's say you had a bad relationship, Lee, where um, somebody that you were in a relationship when you were young, you missed, like they did the wrong thing by you, right? Cheated on you and you attached a story to that that said what? That all men are cheaters. Yeah. So you could believe that. Yeah. Right? You could believe that that was your experience and therefore that really meant that to you mm-hmm. but it's not necessarily true right exactly no right. it's not or you could have had a car accident and then you're too scared to drive or yep yep or you could have suffered a, you could have suffered a financial loss mm-hmm. right somebody could go bankrupt or lose their business and all of a sudden they realize that you know what all businesses are doomed to fail mm. so they have that meaning they think that, oh, well, I failed, so I'm no good in business. Or they think that um, because they had a physical experience that I'm no, no, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm no good at that either. Mm. David um, says, have you broken this mindset yet? Uh, <coughs> good question. Have I broken it yet? Um, I don't believe fully. I don't believe fully. I believe that it's still, 
it's still there, but having a greater awareness around um, the way I think and the way I feel about it, uh, I'm more empowered myself because I have more knowledge around that it's not true. It's just, it's a, it's a built-in fear mechanism that, mm. that's been created in me. So um, I, think it's a, I think it's a learning, it's a day-to-day thing. Um, you know, if a dog ran out of a property, um, I would feel more confident to stand my ground and, you know, yell back at the dog and get back inside, go home or whatever like that. Mm. Um, as opposed to running, because if I run, what's going to happen? He's the dog's going to chase me. <laughs> so, so, you know, you, I guess you gain, you gain a little bit, um, you gain a little bit more um, knowledge and experience, particularly yeah. through awareness through personal development as well. Well, Lorraine says, learn more about the nature of dogs and have more knowledge to overcome the fear. Now, actually, I've just remembered a funny one about dogs. So I've got a completely different thing about dogs. So when I was younger and I would go to my friend's house, she had two different dogs and both of them would just sit on my feet and lick my toes. <laughs> it's just what happened every time. So every time I see a dog, I'd be thinking, oh, they're just going to come off and lick my toes. And they do. Yeah. Every dog, if I go to someone's house, they come and sit on my feet and lick my toes. And this is a belief I have and they all do it. So maybe maybe I, you've got good feet. I don't know. It's maybe really they like weird. your feet. I don't know. So, anyway, so that's my thing about dogs is they all come and lick my toes. Well, that's much better than being attacked by I a dog, know, right? right? <laughs> all right. So we can, we can have all these experiences through uh, health challenges, uh, physical obstacles, financial losses, relationships, or, or just traumatic experiences that we, that we have somewhere in life. Now, we can learn and we can move on from these things. However, as we ascribe a meaning, um, we allow our thoughts, it becomes, we put ourselves into a trap. A, a nice seat, a nice scent and good feet. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what? We, we trap ourselves. Yeah. By having these thoughts, we actually create a trap for ourselves that we've got to get out of. And that's, that's a big thing. And it creates fear, it creates anxiety, Depressive and recessive behavior. Mm-hmm. And that's no good for anyone. No. All right. Now, we can, uh, in the game of life, you know, as I mentioned before, these obstacles shrink. Mm-hmm. And they shrink because you, you learn to overcome them. Yes. Right? Um, I mean, God, I was six years old and um, it was a traumatic experience. One that I don't have, you know, massive memories of, but I know I can remember enough. Um, and, uh, you know, I think you probably block a lot of that out mm. because it was so traumatic. traumatic. Yeah. So, um, but the past can haunt us mm. and it can also damage us moving forward. Yeah. So, so doing things. Yeah. So be careful what we allow the past to dictate our future. You know, don't, you've got to deal with your issues that have happened in the past, you've got to, first of all, recognize them. You can reevaluate the situation and, um, you know, you can make different choices around it, hmm. like the dogs. David says try an NLP. Yeah, okay. All right, so what are, your brain. what are some, yeah, what are some of the things that we can do? We can, <clears throat> we can take time to sit quietly ourselves in a bit of a meditative state. Mm-hmm. We can reflect on some of the events that each and every one of us has have, uh, has experienced in our life, and think about it. You know, is there any traumatic experiences that that you've had, whether it be through a relationship or whether it be through a failure of a business, that's that's cr- you've created this meaning to it. Mm. Um, you know, so maybe have a look at that. Is it giving you emotional pain? Is it creating an emotional sting for you? Is it creating anxiety? Is it creating sadness? Is do you have regret around it? Um, and does it make you feel depressive? Bernie says, understand you, Simon. I was in a house fire and rescued when we are very young. Wow, there you go. Um, Peggy says, kinesiology can help work on traumatic experiences. Yes, yep. I um, Actually, my chiros um, worked a little bit on it because they work with um, chiros very Muscle different. Muscle testing. Yeah, but what would you say they work on as well? They work on the... Neurological side. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's been interesting. Um, so ask yourself, what's the meaning that you believe to be true? And there's two levels of meaning. There's what you think and there's and actually how you respond. Mm-hmm. So there's two levels of meaning, what you think and how you actually respond. So what I think about what happened 
and what I actually respond in real life yeah. can be two very different things. So what can you learn from negative experiences? And that's a big thing that I've always said in this industry, Lee, when something bad or traumatic or something that doesn't go our way, there's two things we can ask ourselves. And do you know what they are? Um, is it written on a sheet? <laughs> So, what, <laughs> so what's good about it? Yeah. What's good about it? So look for the good. What can I learn from it? What can I learn from it? So what's good about it? So look for the good in the situation, no matter what that is. Ask yourself what's good about it, and then ask yourself what can I learn from it. So what, what am I going to do different in the future? Bernie said, now always look for the exit. <laughs> Mick. Yeah, look for the exit, Mick. Mick, where's the exit? Mick, where's the exit? How do I get out of here if I need to get out quickly? I can imagine mm. that to be true. Um, I would look for the exit with the dog. <laughs> so, <laughs> the middle of the street was always good. <laughs> um, so, you know, I guess, you know, can we overcome these things? Absolutely. And so, again, this comes back to relating it back to the topic. Does this really mean that? So, what we relate to the experience, does it really mean that? Or is mm -hmm. it something that we are consuming? It's what we believe it to mean. It's what we or believe it, what it to mean. it actually means. Yeah. So we can overcome it by um, changing our thinking. We can overcome it by addressing it. Um, we can overcome it by, um, by asking ourselves what was good about it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I, if I reflect back to my six-year-old self, you know, what was good about being attacked by a dog? Well, you would say nothing, right? Absolutely nothing. But then you would have to say, okay, well, there's things that I would learn about it. Maybe, well, I'd be more cautious around dogs. Mm -hmm. That's a learning, right? Don't... Don't, don't turn always, you back to Well, don't turn my back to a dog. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was young and, you know, do you, do you walk up? And I've always said to my kids as they grow up, you know, there'd be dogs out in the park on a leash with an owner and I would never say just walk up and pat a dog. No. Never, ever. Like you ask permission from the owner. Is the dog friendly? Is, does he like to be patted? Because mm. you just don't know. So there's lessons that I can learn from it and there's lessons that I've instilled in my children. Um, and, you know, I don't hate dogs. No. Right. If I know them and I can trust them and I can build a relationship with them, but would I um, would I still feel a little bit um, uncomfortable walking down the street apprehensive if a dog ran out? Yeah, I'm I'm going to feel a little bit. It's going to bring back some. You push me in front of you. <laughs> Take lead with me. Yeah. Here, you here, deal the dog. <laughs> um, so, so that's uh, that's our topic for this evening, and that was um, it's really interesting that topic, mm. you know. So quite a good one. Does that really mean this? So thanks for joining us here. Um, obviously, we've been, at least been monitoring and reading your comments there. Uh, it develops a fuller meaning of life. Life lessons is growth, negative or positive. Absolutely. Kath Del Delgleish says there is a lesson in everything life throws at us. Yeah, well, there's plenty yep. of those. Uh, learn from the experiences. Absolutely, said Annette. Um, so uh, what have we got going on this week, Lee? We... We are away on the weekend in Brisbane, went shopping at SAS, caught up with Mary and Jeannie. We had we a did. wonderful weekend. It was good. Uh, went to a wine bar and uh, a we couple of restaurants. We to the wine bar. Well, we went there, but it was closed. So we went to Hellenic well, it wasn't and closed. had a cocktail had a... instead. We did. But that was our intention. Yes. And we did a bit of shopping and then yep. um, back home on the Gold Coast. Got a busy week ahead before we hit Easter. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if you know. there's no lockdowns. Yeah. Who knows what's going on? There's... Um, there is uh, sites under evaluation on the Gold Coast now in Tugan. Where are you? So, um, my, my used to be past hangouts. Yeah, so who knows? Gold Coast could end up in a lockdown. No, let's not, let's not put that out there. Miles, Leanne, how did you overcome your terrifying cat attack experience? <laughs> you know what? She drank more red wine, Miles. Well, funny enough, Miles. So I was actually scared of cats well, after that. Well, you know, a lot of people are. They yeah. get scratched by a cat yeah. or a cat reacts and hisses And we them. had a vicious cat at the house that we lived at. They came with the house at Benogan. <laughs> And I hate, I was scared of the cat. I wouldn't go outside because the cat was there. Really? Yeah. Well, the cat and, and then. Or... And then the kids got scared of the cat, and then the kids got scared of dogs, and had the same experience, like yeah, the yeah. same skin, like you did. They wouldn't go anywhere near well, dogs. Well, because we we then portray our mm -hmm. beliefs and our experiences and our carry a um... steak with you. <laughs> but we we do we actually we we put this onto our to our children, right? Yeah. And I was very conscious of of trying not to do that, but it's not always possible, yeah. right? Because you've got this inbuilt mm. protection my mechanism. My children as well. definitely. Both my children got it. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, 
Awesome. So that was the cat and the dog. Yes. All right. So uh, so we're going to be back next Tuesday after Easter. Oh, so uh, we Kelly wish... wants to know what do I mean the cat came with the house. <laughs> well, just to explain. So we brought this house and it had they had three dogs and four or five cats. And one of the cats apparently was a stray that then just joined in the family. Um, so they took all the dogs and cats and left that cat. And you got it with the house. And it came with the house. Because it stayed there. Yes. <laughs> so anyway. Bizarre. Bizarre. Isn't it? Anyway, yeah. so uh, we want to take the opportunity of wishing you all a very happy Easter. Yes, happy Easter. For those of you that aren't on, our, on the training calls with our business and our company over the coming days. But uh, for all of those that have joined us tonight, I uh, wish you and your family a very safe and happy Easter. Uh, we will be back next Tuesday after the Easter weekend with another great topic. Bernie here. remembers the vicious cat. <laughs> with another great topic here on Loving Life Now. Anything else to add to that? Eat lots of chocolate. Eat lots of chocolate. And yes, we left the scary cat with the house when we left. <laughs> so, so the next people inherited the cat too. as well. They did. <laughs> That's paying it forward. It's, it's sharing the love. <laughs> paying it forward. I wasn't taking it with me. <laughs> no. Oh. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us Bye. and uh, have, a, have a great rest of the week and a great weekend and we'll see you next Tuesday. Bye. Thanks. Bye-bye. <laughs>